Remember, all of this that's happening is a military buildup is 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 beginning to happen. War preparations are being done, and the people came and gave Imam Zayd the Bayah came to him and said, uh, "Now tell us, what do you think about Abu Bakr and Omar?" <laughs> he said. I'm quoting. These are, as I said, this is history here. May Allah forgive them. Ghafar Allahu lahuma. I haven't heard anyone from Ahli Bayti, from my um, family circle, tabarra'a minhuma. You know, tabarra', that's an Islamic word. No one who has disavowed them. I guess that's what they were expecting, but they didn't get the answer that they were expecting. And I have nothing um, to say about them except something that you would consider positive. And then they said to him, then why, why are you pre... Well, uh, it's, uh, the meaning, yeah. The meaning is then: Why do you give? Why are you projecting the image of defending the Ahl al Bayt? If this is, you know, your answer, then it's like saying: Then who are you to come and place us in the position that we're already in now? And then he said to them, the strongest wording that I have in answering the question that you presented is that we deserve this matter, we meaning the Ahl al-Bayt that you are asking about, we, uh, we were more rightful in assuming this responsibility of leadership. But what happened was that public opinion took this affair into their own hands. And they excluded us from it. But this does not put into this issue the matter of kufr. And they assumed, meaning Abu Bakr and Omar, they assumed their responsibilities in office and they did justice. They executed their mandate according to the Kitab and Sunnah. And then they said to him, then why are we fighting? <laughs> I mean, when you read this, it is it is sorry. I mean, this is yeah, it's it makes your heart ache. Then he said to them, "But these, meaning these Umawi uh, monarchs and kings, these are not like those." These Bani Umayya. They have done injustice to the people, they have done injustice to themselves. And I, all I am doing is calling you to stand, take a stand for the Book of Allah and for the Sunnah of His Prophet. If you respond, that's going to be for your betterment, for your well-being and for mine. And if you decline, then I am not your supervisor. I am not the person to answer for you. لَسْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ بِوَكِيلٌ And then they said, we don't want anything to do with you. Imagine. 15,000 of them now, when they saw all of this happening, and uh, this reminded me, there's a quote of an Imam Ali, 
who describes Ahl al-Kufa, the people of Kufa. The same people now, Imam Ali said this maybe a half a century before this happened. But here he says, it's one sentence, you know, I mean it's a one-liner. In uhmiltum khurtum, wa in huribtum khurtum, wa in ijtama'a nasu ala imamatin ta'antum. وَإِنْ أُجِبْتُمْ إِلَى مَشَقَّةٍ نَقَصْتُمْ Very elaborate. I mean, there's nothing that can, can say it better. Nothing. He's, uh, now this is also not easy to translate, but it's something like this. He's saying about Ahl al-Kufa. If you are left alone, if you're neglected, then you agitate. You want to do something. And then, if you are confronted with a military, your determination fails. And then, if people are coming to a consensus about an imam, you invalidate it. And then, if someone is coming to relieve you of hardship, then you run away. This is exa- I mean, this, it was a statement that was said by Imam Ali, it's like exactly, exactly, speaking about Ahl al-Kufa and the way they dealt with Imam al Hussein, the same way right now they're dealing with Imam Zaid. Exactly. There's nothing that can say it better than that. I don't know if it still applies today. <laughs> Look at the real world <laughs> and that was figure. Imam Ali said that? Yeah, he described the Ahl Kufa in these words. That it's... was when he was dealing with the Khawarij, or yeah, when he was, you know, he was dealing with the people of southern Iraq and Kufa, and he kind of came to know them. Kufa was his capital, right? More or less, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So they, they said, you know. Uh, we want to be dismissed from this obligation, from this bay'ah. We don't want anything to do with you. Leave us alone. We're leaving. And they left. Not only they leave without, you know, making some comment. When they left, they said, oh, the true imam is Jafar al-Sadiq. And they just, you know, went back to their homes or whatever they wanted to do. They carried on with their life. And all of this was taking place when the Umawi military was closing in on Al Kufa and southern Iraq and those areas. And they began skirmishes. This is when the skirmishes began. So Imam Zayd's plan was. And he was planning on beginning a, a, a military um, uh, endeavor against uh, the Umawi armed forces in Safar 122. He had to do this prematurely one month in advance. Um, he had a... Um, I don't like to use the word slogan. It's been muddied too much. He had a motto. Um, and that motto was, Ya Mansur, Ya Mansur. And it means when, when his followers begin exp- just saying this word, then those who are in the know uh, are alerted that it is time to carry arms and, and go and face the enemy. Secret code. It's a secret, yeah, exactly, like a secret code. So when that was done, you know how many people came uh, out of all of this? Around 400. Around 400. 